Hey everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. I haven't done a flip cup in a while and I kind of miss them, so I thought I would do a nice brightly colored one today. But to make it interesting, I thought I would also use this pour as a way to test dimethicone. Now for those of you that aren't familiar, dimethicone is a form of silicone oil commonly found in some amount in hair and skin products and personal lubricants. While shopping the other day, I spent a bit of time looking at the ingredients of lots of hair products. Most of those with a decent amount of dimethicone are kind of pricey, like $15 and up, and I didn't want to pay that just to goof around. But I did find two that were in the $6 range. I'm going to try this one today because it smells amazing. And the first four ingredients, meaning the ones with the highest percentage, are all dimethicone or dimethicone related. So this seemed definitely worth trying. I will put a link for this in the description box below in case you can't find it. For my paints today, I'm using all Artist Loft paints uh, listed in the description box below the video. I've added two drops of the coconut milk serum into all four of these colors, but not into the white or into the yellow. I'm using an eight by eight inch canvas panel for this test. So I'm going to make up a two ounce or 60 milliliter dirty pour, and then I'm going to spread a thin layer of white paint on the canvas panel just to help the pour move once I pour it. And now the color order for the dirty cup. Let me know if you always want to see this portion because if not, I won't keep adding it to the videos. I don't wanna bore you, but I also don't want to not include something you need to see. So let me know in the comments below. And for the last step before the pour, I'm spreading some white paint on the canvas to make the pour move around more easily. I have flipped the cup and I've let it sit for a couple of minutes to let the paint settle down on the canvas panel. And it's time to lift the cup. Now, do you guys get kind of stressed out before lifting a cup? I always do. Like for a second there, I'm like, oh my gosh, what if it sucks? <laughs> you know, that's a lot of paint and time mix to mix it and everything. Ugh. So let's see. That's a lot of cells. Wow. There is no torch going to happen on this thing. I'm trying to think of what it is I like the most. Uh, I don't care about this at all. So I'm totally okay to lose that. I've never been a fan of tilting just to cover. Okay, so what I love, I love this black band here. Oh, it's just so, oh, it's fabulous. I like this area too and some of that. This I don't care about. That was when I poured the, you know, the ends of the cup over here. I don't care about that. I don't care a heck of a lot about this. Even though it's interesting up close, I know that from a distance right here looks like a gray blob. I think I'm going to tilt some and I just don't know which way to go. Any way I go, I lose something I like. Mm. Okay, first, I think I'm gonna come this way. All right, I can't have everything. So I have to give up something and I have to decide what it is I'm willing to lose because I want to stretch some of these out. I can't have everything. So, I lost that pink corner, that's too bad. I'm gonna come down this way. And I haven't poured this much paint off a canvas in such a long time. 
See, these look like, this looks like two separate pours. I mean, it happened all on the same pour, but this band here looks like it belongs to another pour. So this one is really stumping me. I have been looking at it and looking at it, and there are lots of things about it that are really neat, but overall, it's just a little too busy for me, and I kind of want to scrap it, but all right. I'm going to scrape some paint off and see if that will make things make more sense to me. Um, so I'm going to put my lid here to catch what I scrape off and go to town and see if I can create a negative space area that I like. I'm going to go after anything that looks overall gray. I kind of like the corner, but it's too hard to just try to save that one little corner because chances are when I fill this area with white, it'll push that off anyway. So I think I'm going to just make my life easier. This is quite <coughs> the surgery. I, I need to get this area gone and that. I kind of want to try to save that because I like this little pinky, goldy thing there. I want this little area. That's going to be a tricky. Okay, uh, this, including the black, because the black there is just too much of a black chunk, so sadly it must go to, and then I'm just using some toilet paper, literally, to mop up the rest. The cleaner I can get the area, the less white I'll have to put down to fight what was there before. But you don't want to wipe because you'll just make a lint all over your canvas, so you just want to blot. Now, <laughs> I love the pink. It's really pretty. It just doesn't go with everything else. I'm trying to let it stay, but I can't figure out how. Before figuring out this, I'm going to fill this area in with white while before the edges start to dry on me. Okay, so after tons of thinking. <laughs> I've decided that what I think is going to look best is if I make sort of an arc here of white, sort of a band of color like that, and then I can accept it having all these wild crazy colors. I'm just going to draw myself sort of my line So everything on the other side of the line is going to go. <laughs> we'll see. Now to change the shape down here a little bit. This is definitely working for me a lot more. And now I've got to do something with the edges. Blowing with the big tube would be too much, and the little tiny black tube that I sometimes use, this end is too little. So I think I'm going to go with a coffee stir because the hole on that is probably exactly what I need. 
Now I have to ask myself if I like that. I don't know. So the better solution is light swiping. So I'm using the skewer and I'm putting it parallel to the canvas. Well, mostly parallel. And I'm just swiping out a little sort of a wisp. And then by doing that, it sells up. I've zoomed you in so you can get a better view of what I'm doing. And I have to wipe after every single pass so that I don't bring in the white paint into the main body of color. So I'm just pulling gently out and then leaving it to sell. And then when it ends up sort of like with a ball on the end, if I don't like that, all I have to do is pull out that way. It'll come more to a point, which I think I prefer. I love that. Now, something else that I need to address is here. This sort of bland little blue patch. I tried bringing in some pink into it, that wasn't enough. It needs something. That and a little bit of going on here. So I've got to add something to liven those up. I think I'm going to try a little black. Very little, just to see. Just because there's black here, it's kind of giving me permission to bring some over here. Just want to see what happens. I'm following lines that already exist. And what I've been doing now after making those lines is I'm blowing onto them so that it pushes the paint around and sort of blends it in and makes other colors interact with it. And for the last step, in adding little touches in here. I'm sort of making fake cells. So what I've done here is I've dropped um, some black, I've made a ring, then I dropped yellow paint in the center of it. And now I'm gonna drop a little bit of aqua mixed with white. I'm just gonna let it fall dead center. And you really have to let it fall. If you touch it, you won't get the spread you need. It'll just make a little tiny dot. So you really need to let gravity pull the paint down for you. And so then now when that spreads, it's going to make the yellow ring smaller and tighter. And then I can just add another color if I want, or I could just stop there. And then if it looks too round, because none of the other cells are round, just sort of push at it from other areas or blow in. The one that I did here needs a little stretching. And so now this area doesn't look so bland anymore. So I'm going to heather out the edges here, and I think I'll be done. I really like this look. I actually like it a little better than blowing because it's more controlled and I have more ability to select exactly which color I want to have feather out. Blowing sometimes can be a little overpowering and random. These are the last little swipes, and this is going to be done. Ah, oh, I absolutely adore this. I especially love the sort of lacy edges. I added a little bit more black veining here 
just to bring the black down all the way. Oh, I'm so happy with this. And now for your close-up. These little wispy things are my favorite thing about this right now. I am shocked by the number of cells the dimethicone produced, so it's going to be something I, I use more often. I did it and I had no idea that it could do this, so we'll have to try this again. I suspect that adding maybe only one drop instead of two or three like I did might give this less of a wild and crazy cell thing. But for a first time, I am happy. I also think that maybe if I didn't layer so many layers of color, maybe just six layers of color as opposed to how many layers I had put down, into the cup, that might help too, in making it less wild and crazy. But wild and crazy every now and then is pretty cool. Alrighty, see you in two days. As is usually the case, this dried exactly as it looked wet. The one difference is that the dimethicone rose to the top as the paint dried, and it left some oily spots that I'll have to clean off. No big deal. Other than that, I'm pretty excited to try dimethicone again, and I will share the results with you. At the suggestion and encouragement of viewers, I added a link to my description box for anyone to use who'd like to contribute and sponsor this channel to help me get supplies, etc. I want to say thank you to my first couple of sponsors. Your awesome kindness is going to let me get more things to try out and show all of you. I will publish a sponsor list at the end of the month. Well, I hope you got something out of this. Let me know in the comments below. Leave me a thumbs up if you'd like, and subscribe if you haven't done it already. I would greatly appreciate it if you'd share this video. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.